Hey guys and welcome to my 1 to 99 and 120 agility guide for 2020. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. As per usual, we start with the useful experience boosts. First of all, we have the wise invention perk, which can give you one to 4% bonus experience with a cap of 50,000 per day. We then have pulse and cinder cores, which give you two to 10% bonus experience once popped and the cores themselves actually have bonus experience inside of them. Torso incense sticks, which can be stacked up to 2%. The refer friend score, which is 10%. The wisdom aura, 2.5%. Double experience weekend, of course, 100% bonus experience plus stacks. Clan cap boost, which can be 3 to 6%, depending on how many times in a row you've capped. And I do have a video on this if you're curious with a link to my clan, which I'll link in the description below. And the Inspire Love Relic from Archaeology, giving you 2% extra experience. Next up, we have the useful items for the skill, and if you're level 99, using that agility skill cape is very useful because you no longer fill obstacles and you'll no longer require a sure-footed aura. Weight-reducing clothing like the Boots of Lightness will reduce the rate of failing obstacles. The Nimble Outfit can give you 1-6% to experience boost depending on how many pieces of the outfit you have, 5 pieces, and you get a 1% additional bonus up to 6% if you have the full outfit. The Collector's Insignia from the Barbarian Assault minigame can give you 5% more agility experience and 10% when charged. Speaking of Barbarian Assault, it's also very good bonus experience if done correctly in a good team or French chat. If you need a French chat for Barbarian Assault, use the French chat called BA space teams. So BA teams. The sure-footed aura can be used to prevent the player from failing obstacles before level 99. Silverhawk boots, which we'll cover in just a second, give you XP every 45 to 60 seconds. Toad Flax Instant Sticks are going to give you a 12.5% stacked up to 50% chance to avoid failing obstacles before level 99. And for the Heffing Course, the Perfect Juju Agility Potion can increase the chance of getting you a shortcut at the Heffing Course. Next up we have the agility boosts which can get you into higher level areas much sooner getting you much higher experience per hour at a low level. We have the god banner which if you do have it is great. 30 minutes boost plus 5 agility every day. A summer pie plus 5 agility boost. Stamina potion, agility potion, abyssal lurker scroll and the jitterberry. I would stick to the above four and if you don't have the gold banner don't worry about it just simply use summer pies or the stamina potions if you have level 77 herb lore. Next up for those interested here are all the quests that give you a straight agility experience reward keep in mind some of these quests do have a certain agility pre-requirement now the silver honk boots are an item i want to touch upon in depth now you can obtain this item through the oddman store for absolutely nothing completely for free however the feathers are not for free but you do obtain the feathers from various mystery boxes from events or randomly through Treasure Hunter if you're lucky. If you want more, you can always buy them off the Grand Exchange, but they are a very expensive way of training, and I only recommend you use these level 80 plus agility because otherwise you're really wasting your money. Now, if you do have the Nimble Boots, do not worry about using Silverhawks as they also work as a replacement item for the Nimble Boots. So you'll still be getting that 1% bonus experience, and if you have the full set, the set bonus with the Silverhawk Boots. Now, I've put up some examples on screen from levels 80 to 90, 90 to 99, and 99 to 120, and the amount of feathers and approximate cost it will be. However, if you want an exact amount of feathers with your amount of bonus experience or your desired level, check the wiki calculator in the description below. Now, before I get into the actual leveling methods, I can't stress this enough, you're better off doing quests for the lower levels because you gain a lot of agility experience and you have to do these quests at some point anyway. By doing a bunch of these level 0 required quests, you can get yourself up to level 29 and then you can do the Grand Tree and then go past level 30 agility and so on. If you aren't doing quests, you want to train levels 1 to 18 at the Gnome Stronghold Agility Course. You can get here through various methods. There's a couple of ways to get there, and you can see the ways to get there on screen. I did actually showcase the Grand Seed Pod in the little clip you saw before being sped up. This course is around 7,000 agility experience per hour, and you want to stay here until level 18. Of course, if you don't want to be doing this course, you can simply do another course for around the same experience per hour in Birth Rope. But if you want to skip through these levels quickly, you're better off doing quests. Like I said before, I just had to mention it one more time. 
They will get you those levels quickly and they will also save you time if you're going to be doing some quest line because you'll have some of the required quests done already. Levels 18 to 30, you're going to be training at the Watchtower shortcut. Simply teleport to the Anil Lodestone or if you've never been there before, you have to walk there and activate it. Then go through this little shortcut which requires level 16 agility and then go towards the Watchtower. This area is 10,000 experience per hour, and it's pretty boring, but it is a good training method. You simply want to climb up in the tower to go to the first floor, and then go back down and repeat the process over and over again. And yes, this is actually one of the best training methods for this level, despite it looking so simple and boring and not being an agility course. Alternatively, you can also train at the monkey bars inside the Edgeville dungeon. However, this place is low level wilderness, so you can get attacked. So if you do this method, do not bring anything with you. And you might need more food because the earth warriors and skeletons do end up attacking you, but it is around the same experience. You want to stay here until level 30. Levels 30 to 48 or even 65 agility, you want to be training at the Anachronia level 30 section at the Anachronia agility course. If you've never been to Anachronia before, teleport to the Varrock Lodestone and head east towards the boat. Board the Stormbreaker and you will enter Anachronia for the first time and I'm pretty sure you get a cutscene. After the cutscene, investigate the bones to the south on the beach and then head towards the base camp area. You can then start to train by doing this level 30 section, which is going all the way through the tunnel, over the roots, and back and forth constantly. This will get you a whopping 27.5 thousand agility experience per hour at level 30, and that's pretty impressive in terms of experience rates, even after it's been nerfed. You're going to be doing this up to level 48 or 65, depending on when you want to change your agility training method. At level 48, you can get inside the Wilderness Agility course with a Summer Pie boost. At level 65, you can get access to the Empty Throne Room or do the Wilderness Agility course with a Demonic Skull. If you are going to be training at the Wilderness, you can use the Wilderness Sword 2 and 4 to your advantage, depending on how many of the Wilderness tasks you've completed, and the Demonic Skull also gives you bonus experience after level 50, 4% per level, up to a total of 296% bonus experience at level 99. You can buy the Demonic Skull at the Zamorak Wizard in the Wilderness, nearby the Edgeville Ditch. If you have the Wilderness Sword 4, you can simply teleport there by using it and bring your Demonic Skull if you want that extra bonus experience at level 50. If you're level 48, you need to eat your Summer Pie before attempting to enter the area because you need the boosted level requirement. If you don't have the Wilderness Sword, you have to go there from the Edgeful Lodestone or Edgeful Bank, pull the lever and go inside the Wilderness and walk there manually. This does take longer. And depending on your level and if you're using the Demonic Skull or not, you can get up to 120,000 experience per hour here at level 85. If you're just starting out here, it will only be 40,000 experience per hour. Now, whenever you're training agility, if the talent scout calls for you, go to him, talk to him, and do the little mini game thingy to get a chunk of agility experience, depending on how well you did. It's always worth doing. Now, if you're going to be doing the Heffing course at Profidenas, aka Elf City, you want to train it until level 77. And if you're going to go for the Anachronia course, a level up to level 85 here, because the Anachronia course is the best experience in the game. At level 77, you can use the Heffing course if you have Prif unlocked, and you can get 60 to 90k experience per hour, depending on if you're using perfect Juju agility potions, and if the voice of Saren is active or not, because it does give you increased experience. Now, if you position your camera correctly, you can actually do this course fully by only clicking on one spot without moving your mouse. This does take a few runs to properly position, but once you have it in position, you can go through the entire course simply by clicking your mouse, and the occasional shortcut that comes up through the Perfect Agility Potion is nice and will add up to your experience per hour. Now you also have this velocity mechanic bar in the top corner of your screen. Once this bar fills up, the next obstacle in front of you in the course will be completed automatically, making this course less click intensive than all the other ones. Levels 85 to 99 and beyond, you want to be training at the Anachronia Agility course for a whopping 130 to 200,000 agility experience per hour, depending on your lap times. But before you do anything, please consider upgrading your spa for extra agility experience at the Anachronia Agility course. It does make a big difference in the time it takes you to get to level 99. 
Now this is by far the longest agility course in RuneScape 3, probably taking the average player anywhere from 7 to 8 minutes to complete, and fast players sub 6 minute runs. Doing this agility course can net you a total experience rate of 200,000 experience per hour if you're extremely fast, or lower if you're slower. While doing the agility course, which you can do clockwise or counterclockwise, it really doesn't matter in terms of experience. You can also obtain pieces to upgrade your base camp and pieces of the totems and codex pages, which you can use to create the double surge and double escape codexes. These can be sold on the Grand Exchange for big profits, meaning this is the only agility course that can actually make you money. Now the agility course itself goes throughout the island and it can be a little confusing to find certain obstacles because sometimes you have a lot of running around before you reach the next obstacle. Just keep that in mind, but the more often you do this, the better you'll get at running the course and the more you'll know when you need to surge or bladed dive to get faster lap times. The faster your lap times are, the more experience per hour you'll be getting. And one thing I must mention, if you do get stunned by one of the big game hunter dinosaurs, simply use freedom or anticipate in advance so that you can keep moving instead of being stunned and wasting experience. Here's a map someone created for the wiki if you're curious on where the obstacles are and what agility level requirement they have. If you need this, pause the video. And that's pretty much it for the main training methods for agility levels 1 to 99. Let's move on to the alternative training methods. Now at level 83 agility and level 88 hunter, you can also do charming morphs, which give you around 90,000 agility experience per hour or more, and 600,000 hunter experience. You can also do agility training dummies if you have them in your bank, but save them for double experience weekend as they give you a huge amount of XP. You can also do agility pillars in Profidinas every day for 20,000 experience at level 75 agility. Level 65 to 75 you can also train in the empty throne room which is kind of AFK on the bicycles. If you wish to it's up to you I would just train agility normally. And you can also do barbarian assault of course as I mentioned previously for bonus experience and gooby supply runs. Anyways, with that being said, that's the end of the guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. Since my last agility guide, a couple of things have changed, including the required agility level for the Grand Tree Quest, making my older guide outdated, and of course, the release of Anachronia. Anyways, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.